When looking at all the TV channels, I would say that HBO stands out from the others. They're what you would call a pay TV or premium channel, historically the biggest, most popular one. So they offer something a little different in terms of pricing and availability, I would argue even a different type of programming. They are among the most expensive channels you can get. Whenever I look at the packages from the cable or satellite providers, they seem to offer HBO as an add-on for the cheaper ones, but if you want it included in the package, it is always is the most expensive one. The price that you pay is determined by how they decide to offer it, but HBO themselves sets it at $14.99 a month. The idea behind it is that you'll pay more than the other channels and hopefully get more out of it. The lack of advertising is a big selling point. In 2019, HBO's operating revenue totaled $6.75 billion, 86% of which was from subscriptions. You know, it's not just a cable channel. There's all these apps and streaming services that have confusingly similar names. There's HBO Go as of 2010, HBO Now as of 2015, HBO Max as of 2020. Go and Now feature content from the channel. They're just different based on whether or not you subscribe to the channel. And HBO Max is more of a Netflix equivalent with additional content that ventures outside of HBO. They are owned by Warner Media, who owns the rights to the Warner movies and content from the Turner channel, so they can easily put that onto the service. I know it's a lot to keep track of, which is why I'm going to be focusing much more on the channel itself. As of the end of 2019, it had 43 million subscribers in the US, which is actually a bit down. You may expect that with how competitive the streaming services have made everything, but they've obviously responded to it. See, HBO has always been successful by doing things a little differently and often changing the industry around them in the process. They were an early significant force in creating cable television television and satellite television. They've made their impact on movie production and pop culture in general. You're welcome to dispute this statement, but I'd argue that they've had a greater impact on the world than any other cable channel, and here's why I say that. Cable itself goes all the way back to the 1940s, but it was nothing like we would picture it today. Really, at that time, television itself was relatively new and yet to be popular. I don't want to get too technical about any of this, but it would be broadcast through a signal that was then received by an antenna at people's homes. The system worked well, except for the people who lived in these remote areas. That signal would be coming from so far away that their little antennas couldn't pick it up. The answer to this was a big, powerful antenna that the whole community would use. They would then run cables from that antenna to their homes so they can pick up the broadcast. I hope that was clear, because for a couple of decades, that was the primary use for cable. Charles Dolan was one of the first people to help change that. In 1962, he operated the service in the hotels of New York City called Teleguide. It was one of those things that would broadcast on the TV telling people all the wonderful things that they can do in New York City during their vacation. Well, in creating that, he actually installed some of the first cable lines in the city. Then, three years later, he was granted a permit that gave him the exclusive rights to install these cable lines through the lower part of Manhattan. Basically, the city said you can do whatever you need to do to get the cable to these residents, but you have to to give us a percentage of your sales. And I have to say, this was not a quick way to make money. I don't think I would have had the patience for it. Installing all those cables is a slow, expensive process, with no guarantee that you'll ever gain any customers from it. At one point, a couple years into the project, he had spent over $2 million and had only served about 400 subscribers. With those numbers, it's clear that he was losing a ton of money and he needed help. That is when time became involved. You know, time like the magazine magazine. When very few people had any interest in cable, surprisingly, Time wanted to be a part of it. I realize it doesn't seem like it would make sense, but they considered themselves more of a media company rather than a magazine. They saw their magazine as a medium to convey information to people, and this cable television endeavor would be yet another way to do that. So Dolan had investments from Time, but he still needed a way to bring in the customers and make this whole business work. When you spend all of this time and money laying cable, 
but you need to find a way to make people care about it. That's where HBO comes in, and the idea for it was not unlike what it is today. He figured that he can pay the movie studios for the licensing rights to show their movies, and then use those movies to attract subscribers to the channel, who would hopefully be willing to pay $6 a month for it. Or, as a different source of revenue, the cable providers would pay him so they can carry his channel. The other piece to this was local sporting events. They would secure the rights to air those as well, and that's where the name comes from. HBO stands for Home Box Office, because they were providing entertainment straight to your home that you would otherwise have to go out and buy a ticket to see. In 1972, they made their first broadcast. And I think this is pretty cool. It was an ad that they placed in the newspaper to promote it. They showed a hockey game, followed by a lesser-known Paul Newman movie. I like this part of it. It says, Your monthly subscription to Home Box Office is the one and only ticket you need to enjoy entertainment like this month after month after month. And you get the best seats in the house, <laughs> your house. I mean, how do you turn that down? Well, in reality, most people did, in fact, turn that down. That first broadcast went out to a small part of Pennsylvania to something like 350 people. Still, for quite a while after that first broadcast, none of this was profitable, so he kept needing more and more money from time until they practically had taken things over. In 1969, they made a big jump to almost 50% ownership, and then three years later, that was raised to two-thirds ownership, and then in 1973, they had bought all of those operations. Despite being mostly his idea, Charles Dolan completely ended his involvement with HBO when they had only 8,000 subscribers. Though I should mention that after the sale, he became known for establishing Cablevision, a cable provider throughout the Northeast region of the US that his family sold for $17 billion in 2015. In addition to owning the New York Knicks, the New York Rangers, and the arena in which they play at Madison Square Garden, and AMC Networks, so there's a lot there. But back to HBO, having started in 1972, in the early, early days of cable, it is the oldest cable channel that still exists today. By 1978, premium channels had grown to 1.5 million subscribers, HBO made up most of that, and here's how they did it. FCC regulations were relaxed. They started putting stuff on the channel for more hours each day. There was much more physical cable throughout New York City and therefore more potential customers, but the part that I think is the coolest is in 1975, HBO became the first TV channel to continuously broadcast a signal over satellites. It was a good event to do it with, too. It was one of the biggest boxing matches of all time. Muhammad Ali against Joe Frazier for the heavyweight championship of the world. It was their third match together held in the Philippines. It was called the Thrilla in Manila. HBO used this as an opportunity to use satellite technology to reach a national audience without installing an absurd amount of cable across the country. The whole thing is considered to be a big event in sports, technology, and television. Moving forward, in 1978, they started making a more noticeable impact on the film industry. Their big expense had always been obtaining the rights to show the movies, so in that year, they made the decision to start investing in the production of movies. They did it in return for the exclusive pay TV rights, saying that they'll help pay to make the movie as long as they're legally the only premium channel that can show that movie. And then three years later, they took it a step further when they worked with Columbia Pictures and CBS to create TriStar Pictures. So whenever you see this screen before a movie, just know that they were created in part by HBO as a way to more effectively add to their collection of movies that they can show on their channel. Now, in addition to HBO, they've also been responsible for establishing a couple of other channels. I mean, of course, you have HBO2 and HBO Signature, an HBO family and a ton of those, but you also have Cinemax. Back in 1980, Showtime was their biggest competitor. Even though HBO was still three times larger and seen as the main premium channel, Showtime was becoming a concern. So that year, they introduced Cinemax, and because it was a little cheaper, it became a direct competitor with Showtime, and it's thought to have been HBO's attempt to slow them down. HBO and Showtime have always been very competitive with each other. Another example would be in 19 when stand-up comedy was reaching new heights in popularity, HBO decided to launch a separate channel centered around it, logically called the Comedy Channel. Then as a response to it, a few months later, Viacom, the owner of Showtime, launched a very similar channel called Ha, and I have to admit, a pretty funny name for a comedy channel. Neither channel did very well, so the two agreed to put their differences aside and merge the channel
channels together into a new collective channel called Comedy Central. They split the ownership of it until 2003 when Viacom spent over a billion dollars to buy the other half of it. So that's significant. In addition to the obvious channels, fewer people may know that HBO was responsible for establishing both Cinemax and Comedy Central. Finally, I want to talk about their original programming and the cultural impact that it's had. See, the great thing about HBO is that there are no advertisers, so it's much more of a direct relationship with their subscribers, without other people meddling with it. Since they have never had to worry about pleasing advertisers, they've been able to air some more explicit, edgy content. Tales from the Crypt would be a good earlier example of this. Going back to the early 1980s, they had produced TV shows and made-for-TV movies, but in the 1990s is when they started dedicating more resources toward these productions, and I would say really became known for them. Some of the bigger ones at that time would be Sex and the City and The Sopranos, more recently it's True Blood and Game of Thrones, all shows that I think you'll agree it would be much different if aired on a more traditional network. They have been critically acclaimed too. HBO won their first Emmy Award in 1988 and have since received literally hundreds of them, far more than any other cable channel. In 1997, they received 90 nominations, which was the first time that a cable channel had more than any other traditional network. We can't deny that HBO has formed their own path, and I think things like this prove that they used it to not only catch up to the others, but in many cases surpass them. I just think it's neat how a channel that couldn't get more than a few hundred people to watch its first broadcast has since become the producer behind all these massively successful shows such as Entourage and The Wire. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite HBO original? There are some good ones to choose from, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Curb Your Enthusiasm. Controversial opinion, but I say better than Seinfeld. So would you agree with me that HBO stands out from the other television channels? Aside from creating their own path that remains less traveled, HBO has changed the TV and movie industries in more ways than I can express. So any thoughts that you have about the network, their evolution, their model, or any of these confusingly named streaming services, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.